Welcome gamers, welcome back to Gamers Bay, it's Daniel, and we're back with more Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition Remix, and today we're going to check out a really cool SUV in the game, the Jambala Porsche Cayenne GT750 by Turbo. So this vehicle is an absolute beast, and it's just one of many awesome SUVs in the game, though this one is likely among the fastest of them all. And unlike some of the other SUVs in the game, this one is really great for drifting. Now, it's also just one of two Porsches in the entire game, as there's also a tuned Jambala Porsche 911, which is also a blast to race with. Now, there's other SUVs in the game as well, including several Hummers, Cadillac Escalades, and one of my very favorites, the Mercedes-Benz G500, which also handles really well, but it's not so great for drifting, and it's certainly nowhere near as fast as the, as the GT750 by any means. So, this car was just one of many additions to Dub Edition Remix, and it's also a very good reason to get your hands on a copy of the Remix version of the original. Now, I've had Dub Edition for many years, but I just recently got a copy of Dub Edition Remix for the original Xbox. Now, I know this game emulates the PCSX2, but I honestly didn't care much for the graphical glitches that I encountered with the emulation, and I honestly prefer playing it right off the console, but to each their own. Now, this car is a tank too, it will pretty much keep itself level after collisions without flipping over aimlessly, a situation you will often encounter with a lot of the other vehicles in the game, but of course any collision is potentially going to slow you down, at least to some degree. Now, the GT750 is also kind of top-heavy, in a very similar fashion to the Mercedes G500, and taking sharp turns at high speeds while using the zone ability can quickly cause you to flip this vehicle over. Now, for those who aren't aware, the zone ability is essentially a slow motion maneuver that helps you to look ahead and it gives you time to correct your position on high jumps and wide turns where you can't always see what's ahead of you. Now I also increased the drift factor just enough to help slide around turns without spinning aimlessly out of control. Because like I said that, uh, that zone ability while it can help you look ahead if you use it on turns with certain vehicles at high speeds, you can quickly lose control of your car. Now as for the tracks shown here, they're both from the Atlanta map. Now the tracks included are the Sweeper and Whiplash tracks. And so yeah, I really like this SUV. And like I said, this if you don't if you haven't played Dub Edition Remix and you have the original Dub Edition, you really should get a copy of this game. Uh, because you get, I think there's like two dozen extra vehicles, and this is by far the coolest SUV in the entire game. I love racing with this vehicle. It really hugs the road, it really drifts really nicely, and when you take high jumps, it lands without going, without spinning aimlessly out of control. You can really retain control of your vehicle. You see here, watch this jump. Look how smooth that was. Some of the other SCVs, you'll end up losing momentum when you hit the ground. And look at this, I just flew right over that vehicle. So this this uh, this SCV, it's not super heavy and it's not super light. It's like somewhere right in the middle and it really keeps it well balanced. It's just a very, very, very nice vehicle to race with. And so we're going to check out one more track here from the Atlanta map. Just a really cool SCV. Really, really cool. And like I said, you know, the uh, as far as emulation goes, I encountered there was just too many graphical glitches uh, trying to run this game in PCSX2. I really did not like it. Um, 
it, there was just too many artifacts popping up on the screen and the frame weight frame rates weren't weren't too perfect and, but you do get a few advantages to emulating you know versus the you know playing the original game on a console for one in PCSX2 you can upscale to like 4k no problem and it will it will actually remap the pixels to where it looks like the game was actually 4k it does a really good PCSX2 does an excellent job of that but the frame rates were kind of an issue as, as far as I'm concerned and I really for the most part just preferred having the game to play directly on my console. Now I kind of wish Rockstar would uh, bring the Midnight Club series back. Um, it's been years since we've seen any new Midnight Club games. We had Midnight Club Los Angeles. That was another just really badass uh, racing game. And had a whole lot of new cars that weren't in the a lot of new vehicles that weren't in this version but uh, that wasn't on the original Xbox that was on other consoles I believe the PS3 and I think I had it I know I had it I had it on the 360 and I ended up selling my copy I don't know why now I kind of wish I had kept it because I still have the 360 slim but uh, I could always grab another copy of it I think they're like 15 or eight, 15 to 18 bucks on eBay is about the going rate for uh, a decent copy of Midnight Club Los Angeles. But uh, anyways, that is the Porsche Cayenne GT750 by Turbo. What do you think about this vehicle? Let me know in the comments below. I am going to go ahead and tune out now, but I'm going to continue to play this last track, and you're totally welcome to continue to watch. Um, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. And until next time, take care.